B. S. Gang, I'm not happy. Browns, what are we doing? How did we lose that football game? Let's just crack on with the video. It's an OBM topic. Y'all know the schedule. Let's go. I look. If you're an ABA -er, you can be an OBMer. If you're an OBMer, you cannot be an ABA -er. No, no, I'm just kidding. But I do suggest that everyone does not do it backwards like I did if they love behavioral science. But I do really, really highly recommend, suggest that you go check out that course taught by Ryan Kieran or Dr. Allison King. Because most of what I say comes from the passion I had from following that course. Yo, so today is Monday. And usually this is my... Hyper day. I'm like very, very hyper on Monday. No idea why. And today I'm even more hyper because the Browns are pissing me off. Like, f look, Browns L has nothing to do with today's video. So I need to let that go and get on with today's video. So let's do that. You may or may not know this, but behavioral systems analysis, BSA, involves the application of behavioral analysis systems who analyze and improve the performance of an organization. So, yant, yup, I am an OBM specialist. And yes, I use behavioral systems to analyze rats at work, JK. Not just rats, but I do use BSA to understand employee performance. And then I also use my knowledge in behavior change procedures to improve organizational performance at the individual level. Before going any further, you can actually see an amazing free video on behavioral systems analysis on the Daily BA. And it's recorded with one of the goats. And I'll say the name because it's in the title, Matthew T. Broadhead, Dr. Broadhead. So, of course, after you watch my thick video, maybe go check out that one as it's really professionally done by two professionals. BSA, the acronym for Behavioral Systems Analysis, is essentially conducting performance diagnostics across the organization level. And then you work your way all the way down to the performer slash job level. So in the title, I used the way Dr. Allison directly described it, three levels of analysis. So I tried to draw the chart out given to me in the OBM specialist course, because I've been seeing a bunch of ABA people drawing fancy notes. And I decided that's probably the last time I'm going to do it because mine looked like. So let's look at the performance diagnostics at three different levels. We got the organization level. So what's being assessed? You got first organizational goals, strategy, structure, and then, of course, your key metrics, right? What you're measuring. And we can move to the process level where we ask ourselves what is being assessed again. You can see that we need to understand the organization's processes, who the key performers are, and how they will influence those business metrics. And now we're going to go more in depth at the performer level. So let's crack on with that as this is what most people in ABA are going to be able to identify very well. So just like the other two levels, we got to ask ourselves, what is being assessed? Why are ABAers good in this level? It's all about the A's and C's, influencing the key performers' targeted behaviors. Now let's go back staying within ourselves, good self-management, self-awareness. Let's actually just stay on the performance level because this is such an important level and a level that I can explain to you ABAers very well. So remember, the performer level is about the A's and C's of the key performers' targeted behaviors. Wait, do you mean the A's and C's that we use in ABA? Yeah. Same exact thing, dude. Literally no difference. You know what I loved about my process and doing it backwards is that I was able to figure out as a performer what the organizational leaders were doing wrong. And I've gotten messages like, oh my man, you must be a god. You used OBM to figure out what was wrong with your ABA organization. No, it's just the ABA organization is being run by people who have never even opened an ABA book. Yeah. I don't see how that's still allowed. In fact, their business is still running somehow. If you're looking to drive performance at the performer level, I'm going to tell you four secrets that I've told many of y'all before. So instead of getting mad at someone in a position that's working a position that you've never worked, let's start considering one of these four things first. The pinpointed behaviors are not occurring or occurring correctly today. One of the following is occurring. You have a lack of antecedents that are prompting the pinpointed behaviors. You are not creating an antecedent 
for that person to engage in the behavior you want them to at work. It's your fault. Since we said it was about the A's and C's of behavior, we just went over A's. Now let's go over C's. So two, you got a lack of consequences that support the pinpoint of behaviors. And by consequences, I mean, you are not reinforcing this employee enough for them to keep engaging in that behavior you want them to. So let's say they were engaging in the behavior yesterday, but not today. What's wrong? Is reinforcement being provided today? Maybe take a look. We got like 2,000 therapists working for us. We got that dough rolling in. Not anymore. And not for long. So I highly suggest that anybody out there using children to propaganda their business for money, remember that bottom line performance can turn on you. And we still have two more things that could be a problem at the performer level, at the very bottom. Imagine going all the way up. This video would never end. As we get halfway through this video, let me remind you that, again, the behavioral systems analysis video on the Daily BA with Dr. Broadhead is very professional and done by professionals. So if you want to know more, go look at that. But continuing on with this, number three. This is you probably or maybe have antecedents that are prompting other behaviors which conflict with the pinpointed behaviors. Now, if you don't know what that means, you probably should have no stake in an ABA organization where you provide behavioral therapy to children. Last but not least, consequences that are reinforcing those other behaviors. So you're reinforcing a behavior you actually don't want. So now that I've cascaded all the contingencies for you, a simple motivational interview with the person at the bottom could help your business. Maybe you find out that someone in their family just died. Maybe you find out that they just failed an exam. Maybe you find out something in their life tragic happened. And a simple conversation is all it takes to fix that. There's no reason to even go in specific examples because do you see how powerful that interview could be? Now that you know what that person is going on, what their environment is doing to them, you can create a better work environment for them by creating antecedents to prompt the wanted behaviors and reinforcing the wanted behaviors with consequences. Yeah. The president of the United States will probably be a doctor level BCBA one day. Guaranteed. So that's why you can catch me next time. Because you got to generalize, maintain, and create a model with long lasting sustainability and one that's open to change. But at the end of the day, if you want to drive results, you're looking to get paid, you gotta do what's right to get that bag.